Hey everyone, welcome to the season eight premiere of The Wave. My name's Trey. And I'm Danny. We're so excited for this season. We have a lot of great performers lined up. But before we go any further, let's meet this week's featured artist, Riley Lynn. My name is Riley Lynn. I am originally from Gulf Shores, Alabama, and I'm currently based in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. I dabble in almost any genre. Whenever I play gigs, I play a range, I play rock, I play pop, I play country, but whenever I'm writing and recording my own music, I focus on doing country music. So every time I write, I feel like it looks a lot different. Sometimes I start with chords, sometimes I start with lyrics or an idea, but usually I get the song down and then I'll play it at gigs, see how people like it, I'll play it on TikTok Live and stuff, see what people like, and then usually I'll go to a studio, which I've been going to, County Q Studios in Nashville, and then I record a song. Um, one of my favorite gigs I've ever played is there's a restaurant back home called Moe's Barbecue, and there was one time I had a bunch of girls there, and they were requesting Taylor Swift, and I love Taylor Swift, and it was just a really good time. You know, they were sitting there, they were singing, they were dancing along with me, and it was just a lot of fun, and oh, two of them still follow me on TikTok, so I still like have a relationship with them, which is really cool. My overall goal as an artist is to make a career out of this. I feel like that's for a lot of people. Um, you know, I want to have a job that I love doing and music is what I love doing. So the day I can make money and live comfortably with music, I think that's definitely like the long-term goal, just doing what makes me happy. And we're back here with Riley Lynn. Thank you so much for sitting down and talking with us today. Hi, how are you guys? Of course. Good, we're great. how are you? <laughs> I'm good. So let's dive right into the interview. Um, your new single, Heat, comes out on March 8th. What is the inspiration behind this song? Um, you know, I just wanted to write a song that kind of, something that I've never really do dove into before, kind of more of a party atmosphere love song, you know, kind of about going out. I don't go out, but I thought it'd be fun, you know, to write a song about people who do and kind of finding someone at like a bar or a club and kind of just wrote a song about that. Definitely. Well, I saw your little photo shoot you did with like the cover art and everything for it and the writing on the mirror and everything. What was the story behind that cover art? Was it just fun or was there a story behind it? You know, I just, I kind of, honestly, I'm a Pinterest girl. And so I went through Pinterest and I was like, what do I want? And I found this image and I was like, I want to recreate that. And then it kind of turned to like very much a Regina George, Mean Girls kind of vibe. And then kind of just took elements of the song and recreated it. That's cool though. So you mentioned you don't go out a lot or party, but you're in a sorority. Yes. So how does being in a sorority and having all of these sisters around you kind of like, does that impact your music in any way? I th it definitely is a really good support system. Like for my pictures, for the new cover, um, for Heat, I had two of my sorority sisters come help me take those. And it's just, it's a lot of good support team that I'm very grateful to have. I love that. That seems so awesome also. <laughs> um, so later on in the show, you're going to be performing a song uh, called Peach Tea. but. A little birdie told me though that you don't like peach tea. So <laughs> what inspired you to write a whole song about it? Um, well, personally, I've never had peach tea, so I might need to change that. But I just kind of wanted a song that was about, you know, a, su a summer fling, about southern love and stuff. And I just had this idea of peach tea. I, I just liked the way it sounded. So I wrote it down on my notes app, and it stayed there for months. And then finally, I was sitting down, and I was like, okay, I need to get over this writer's block. So I took peach tea, and it just kind of had a couple of drafts, and it just kind of fluttered, and there it was. And I was, I love it, so. You're having a strawberry wine moment. <laughs> I love strawberry wine. That song's so good. So we want to play a fun little game with you. We're calling it the Walk of Fame game. It's a little bit about celebrities and stuff, so we're just going to get to know you a little bit through this game. Okay. So who do you think is your celebrity lookalike? I've heard Kelly Clarkson so many yes. times. I, I, don't, I, I don't know. I kind of see it, but I hear it so much for some we, reason. We literally said that while you're performing and we were like, she looks just like Kelly Clarkson. No, it's literally like doppelganger. That's honestly a compliment. She's so pretty. I know. She's, happy. She's so talented also. She, oh my gosh. So, um, so talented. Who is your celebrity crush? Um, Taylor Swift. I love Taylor Swift. A Swiftie um, in the house. Yes, a huge Swifty. What do you love about Taylor Swift? Um, well, I just think she definitely is showing, you know, women showing up in the music industry. The whole reason I started music was because of Taylor Swift. I remember listening to her music when I was like six, and I was like, I want to do that. So then I started singing, and now here I am going to school for music and being here, and it's it's great. It's very surreal, and just the love that she has for her fans. I definitely look to her as like a career woman that I strive to be. That's awesome. So which celebrity's closet would you raid to go to a red carpet event? Oh my gosh. 
have to think about this. Oh my, oh my gosh, I actually don't know. I feel like... <sighs> any genre of any era. Oh my God, I don't know. I feel, there's elements I like, like I love Olivia Rodrigo's fashion on the red carpet. Um, I love Taylor Swift's fashion. Of course. I love mm -hmm. Lana Del Rey's fashion, you know, she hit, I don't know. All of them? All of <laughs> Can them? I like, you know, yeah. pick and choose? No. I don't know. Just hire a stylist, make it easy for yourself. Yeah, <laughs> I'll do that. Now, this one might be a little controversial. Oh gosh. But who is your least favorite celebrity? Oh my gosh. Oh, I feel like I have to think about this for a moment. Who is my least favorite? Or even just someone that irks you just a little bit. Kanye West. Yeah. Yeah. I might actually get I might get dogs for that. <laughs> um, <It's laughs> Kanye right. West. I'll say Kanye West. All right. Well, I'm sure everyone's so excited to hear your performance. Would you like to tell everybody where they can find you at on social media, where they can find your music? Yeah. So I'm on all music platforms underneath Riley Lynn, and I'm also on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, and Facebook, all under at the Riley Lynn. So make sure you guys go check me out there. All right. Awesome. And we'll see you guys with music news. Lana Del Rey fans, I hope you have your red dress on tonight because the star announced that her 10th album is on its way, stating the music business is going country. She announced the album titled Lasso at a Billboard event back in January and plans to work with famed producer Jack Antonoff. The two previously produced Did You Know That There's a Tunnel Under Ocean Boulevard together, which was nominated for three Grammy Awards. Lasso is set to hit stores in September. Miley Cyrus, Lord, and Paramore are among the lineup of artists slated to participate in A24's tribute album, Everyone's Getting Involved, honoring Talking Heads' iconic 1984 live album, Stop Making Sense. The album will showcase 16 cover of songs from the original record. The album has no release date just yet, but you can listen to Paramore's cover of Burning Down the House wherever you listen to music. Early last week, legendary country singer Toby Keith passed away at age 62. The singer burst onto the country scene in Nashville in 1993 with hits like Should Have Been a Cowboy and A Little Less Talk and A Lot More Action. Keith topped the Billboard Hot Country charts 20 times over the course of his career, with the last number one coming from 2011's Made in America. The hitmaker had been fighting stomach cancer for 18 months. We offer our condolences and we raise our red solo cups for his friends and family. The 66th annual Grammy Awards were full of surprises. Olivia Rodrigo, Lana Del Rey, and John Batiste all went home empty-handed, despite each having multiple nominations. Taylor Swift made history, though, by becoming the artist with the most Grammys for Album of the Year. Earlier in the night, she also took the stage to announce something special. Her newest album, The Tortured Poets Department, will be dropping on April 19th. Now, Danny, I think we can all agree that sometimes the Recording Academy gets it wrong. So who do you think was snubbed this year at the Grammys? Um, I would say for me personally, it would be Renee Rapp, just because she had a pretty big 2023. And her album came out early last year. It was really good. So it was just crazy that she didn't even get like a Best New Artist nomination. Mm -hmm. But I'm hoping that next year the Grammy committee will recognize her talent and give her a nomination. Yeah, what about you? Who do you think was the biggest snub? For me personally, I would say uh, Barbie World by Nicki Minaj and Ice Spice from the Barbie soundtrack. You know, that was a huge movie, broke all kinds of records and everything um, for best rap song at the Grammys. And the funny thing is, this has never happened in Grammy history. The Grammys put on their official website and on their official Twitter page or X page, whatever you call it now, um, that Barbie World had won. And then they quickly deleted it and said that Killer Mike had won for his song which that's just kind of unheard of, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's a pre-planned thing that the tweets are drafted up, you know, hours in advance. So for that to be a mistake is kind of a little shady. It's messy. You know, allegedly it's, there's some industry politics yeah, there, but... Some controversy. Maybe we'll see next year, but... Maybe. All right, that's it for this week's music news. We'll be right back with Riley Lynn. We hope you've all had a happy Valentine's Day, and we hope you enjoyed our season eight premiere of The Wave. As always, be sure to check out our Instagram every Wednesday for new episodes. To close out today's episode, Riley, Riley Lynn. Lynn. I remember you, blonde-headed cool guy. The moon was full, the night that I met you on the full. Of July, and the fireworks went off like the ones in my.
stomach when you asked me to dance I'd spend all my summers with you if I was given the chance and they'd go something like this sipping on ice cold peachy maybe you're the one for me summer afternoons only me and you my heart is yours to keep dipping our cold and at the creek falling in love under the sun trying to beat the heat sipping on peach tea a southern summer love is what i'm dreaming of with you picnics in the meadows shaded by magnolia Trees. Kissing in the back seat when no one can see us. Wearing my heart on my sleeve, me and you for eternity. Sipping on ice cold peachy. Summer afternoons, only me and you. My heart is yours to keep. Dipping our bare feet in the cold end of the creek. Falling in love under the sun. Trying to beat the heat. Sipping on peach tea. palm of your hand and I can't even start to understand how you make me feel like this and the sun may say but I love you for another day I don't think I have ever felt this way sipping on ice cold peachy maybe you're the one for me summer afternoons only me and you my heart is yours to keep dipping our bare feet in the cold end of the creek falling in love under the sun trying to beat the heat sipping on peach cheese